Who killed Jesus, do you think? Then the people who had arrested Jesus led him to the home of Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of religious law and the elders had gathered. Meanwhile, Peter followed him at a distance and came to the high priest's courtyard. He went in and sat with the guards and waited to see how it all would end. Inside, the leading priests and the entire high council were trying to find witnesses who would lie about Jesus so they could put him to death. But even though they found many who agreed to give false witness, they could not use anyone's testimony. Finally, two men came forward who declared, this man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, well, aren't you going to answer these charges? What do you have to say for yourself? But Jesus remained silent. Then the high priest said to him, I demand in the name of the living God, tell us if you are the Messiah, the son of God. And Jesus replied, you have said it. And in the future, you will see the son of man seated in the place of power at God's right hand and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothing to show his horror and said, blasphemy, why do we need other witnesses? You have all heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? Guilty, they shouted. He deserves to die. Then they began to spit in Jesus's face and beat him with their fists. And some slapped him, jeering, prophesy to us, Messiah. Who hit you that time? Answer my prayers, O oh Lord, for your unfailing love is wonderful. Take care of me, for your mercy is so plentiful. Don't hide from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in deep trouble. Come and redeem me. Free me from my enemies. You know of my shame, scorn and disgrace. You see all that my enemies are doing. They're insults have broken my heart and I am in despair. If only one person would show me some pity, if only one would turn and comfort me. But instead, they give me poison for food. They offer me sour wine for my thirst. In these situations, it's easy to get, how can I put it? Carried away, emotional, transported on a great wave of sympathy, tolerance. But be sure of this, the wave will break. And then there is a need for someone to take a longer view, to set this man and this event in a larger context. That is my task. I am that someone. Facts you say, where are the facts? Indeed, good question. But each witness says something slightly different. So who do you believe? Yes, their stories were useful. Interesting. They create the right impression. Concern, alarm, dis-ease. But some of us look behind the facts, to the motive, to the larger picture. So let me put this to you regarding Jesus, the so-called King of the Jews. And for my witness, not the bleating of a few gullible fools who were taken in by his magic and charm. Yes, I'll give you that, he had charm, a certain way with words. But the scripture, God's word, that is what condemns him. For this little preacher from Nazareth, this Galilean Messiah, got above himself. Answer me this, if you will. Which of the prophets have appointed to themselves? 
But you know, do you? Why? Because they didn't. They always pointed to God. Even that troublesome imposter John, so proud of his wild ways and prancing in the margins where it's very easy to win friends and a few favourable reviews, pointed beyond himself. But I, acting the centre stage, where decisions have to be made, deal struck, that is my responsibility and I carry it alone. I see that we survive. What good would it be to see this jumped up Nazarene tearing up the carefully woven fabric of our equilibrium? Do you think it's easy to survive when these Roman pimps and dandies control our every move? These infidels, they do not care for us and they do not care for peace. And they certainly do not care for God. But they do understand order. This Jesus of yours, this Messiah, he pushed it too far. He came in from the margins where we could control him and contain him, where, let's face it, he had some uses. But like a moth circling too close to the light, it was inevitable. Once he came to the sensor that he would burn. And if you're as interested as knowing what happened as you maintain, if it is justice you're after, then consider this. His death has maintained order, has kept us going. That is what we need to do. That is what we're skilled at. Surviving, adapting. His assault on our order was bound to end like this. So let scripture condemn him. Coming into Jerusalem on a donkey, flouting the Sabbath, disturbing the legitimate business of the temple, calling God Father. But more than this, and if you cannot grasp anything else about this case, then take hold of this one fact that reveals his motive. He pointed to himself. He had the audacity to stand in my presence, the high priest of the temple, the one whose role it is to mark out the coming in and going out of God and enter God's presence on behalf of the people and utter the name that even I am not worthy to utter. None of us. You see, that is the point. He dared to say it. In my presence, dared to say, I am. As if to be with him was to be in the presence of God. And I despise him for it. For striking at the very root of our faith. Destroy this temple in three days. Indeed, it was our, our very faith, our very survival that he threatened and so, it was better that he died. Justice. Blame. Don't speak to me about these things when our very existence is at stake and do not ask for an apology. Did you really believe that the Romans would have suffered him for much longer? Of course not. We merely hastened the inevitable. We pulled some strings. It was convenient for all of us that we brought things to a conclusion. We nailed it. History will not remember him. But we will go on. You want someone to blame. That's natural. That is, how should we put it, reasonable. And if nothing else, I think I have demonstrated that I am a reasonable man. I see things in the context. I do what is right for the survival of our people. I take the longer view. It is reasonable that Jesus died. Better that one man died, expedient. Or would you prefer that the whole people perish? There were no other alternatives. He had to go. But when it came to his going, why even his own fellow Followers conspired against him. This is the other salient fact. It was all falling apart. All the cracks beginning to show. Those half-witty peasants who follow him, even they could not swallow these last blasphemies of his. 
and the one bright spark amongst them saw the horror of it, the damage, and did the decent thing. If you want someone to blame for the death of Jesus, then speak to his good companion Judas. And please, do not think like a tabloid journalist and call him the betrayer. Why, if you care anything for the survival of your people, you will think of him as your saviour.
around the table of the King. The body of our Savior, Jesus Christ, torn for you. very confident. When it is crystal clear and the die cast, and when I stride life's path looking neither to left nor right, defeat me. For my hope rests in my undoing. Pity the upright man who has never stumbled. Have mercy on the sinner who has never sinned. Bind up the wounds of the man who does not know he's wounded and turn around the runner who at the chequered flag reaches for the garland, but has never seen the misery in his wake, the feet he has trodden on, the false paths he has travelled. Possess me, for I am possessed. Defeat me, for I am defeated. Confound me, for I am confounded. Only when I stop seeing myself and the grand tapestry of my own plans, Will I see you as you are, and myself as you would have me?
Amen.